What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are covering flutter spoons. We're gonna go in depth. I got some tips and some tricks on rigging and how to catch those schooling fish during this fall transition. Before we jump in how to fish these different types of spoons, we'll sit down, I'll talk about the different types of spoons uh, and some tips on how to rig them to definitely put more fish in the boat this fall transition and into the fall uh, season. Flutter spoons, I, I covered it briefly in uh, a couple videos ago, but I wanna do an in-depth. I went back and looked and it's been two years since the last in-depth flutter spoon video I did. So today we're gonna sit down, I'll show you some of the, the tips, how I rig them, then we'll jump up, I'll make some casts with the different types of spoons and uh, show you how to fish them. Real quickly, notifi notifications, make sure you guys turn on the, that little bell, click that little bell, get those notifications. Last video, Matt did an awesome video on paper maps and mapping and where to find fish during this transition. And uh, YouTube did not send out the notifications. So I will put a link to that video right up here. Make sure you guys go click that. What you guys missed is how to properly break down a, a, a lake very quickly. My last couple of videos, I've talked about that fall transition, that early transition, where fish are gonna go, how they're, how they're gonna position. So that video kind of fed off of that. To, but make sure that you guys follow along this entire series because when you put that mapping, those mapping tips together, the electronics tips together, and the baits and how to fish them, you guys will have more success this fall time. So let's sit down, I'll go through the spoons, show you how to rig them, and then we'll show you how to fish them. If you guys have been following along these last few videos, especially my videos, I've talked about the early fall transition and it happens quicker than most anglers realize. In fact, here on Lake Chickamauga, this morning I had uh, kind of fog on the water. It was a, a little bit crisp out this morning, a little bit chilly, and that is go time to trigger those fish to start moving. So hopefully you guys are paying attention to that sort of stuff on your fishery. But uh, previous videos, I mentioned a flutter spoon and got a, few, <clears throat> got a few questions, a few messages about uh, flutter spoons, when to fish them, how to fish them, and uh, realized that I haven't done an in-depth or a semi-in-depth flutter spoon video since on Clear Lake like two years ago. And Following these last few videos, we've really talked about bait fish. You know, that is what these fish, these bass are following. They are following the bait fish. When you find the bait fish, either shallow or deep, that is what is gonna trigger these fish to eat. It's what it's gonna keep these fish congregated. It's what it's gonna keep those fish in that location. The bait leaves, the fish are gonna leave. I mentioned that a flutter spoon is a really good bait to mimic bait fish. And uh, I didn't want to confuse you guys with a vertical jigging spoon. You know, that's something that you do farther into fall, more that winter transition. Uh, but the flutter spoon, that summertime to fall transition, when these fish are active and they are swimming, they're congregating that bait, you get those fish suspended underneath the bait balls. A flutter spoon is a, a an awesome bait to mimic dying bait fish. Again, previous videos I talked about how to find the bait, how to find the fish, and uh, how, to how to fish a drop shot down below those, those bait balls. The flutter spoon is probably my favorite way to fish offshore for those fish. Now you can throw a, a flutter spoon shallow. I'd say probably as shallow as five or six feet. But for me, where it shines is probably that 15, to 25 foot range. You know, you start getting a little deeper, you probably need to go with a vertical spoon that falls a little bit quicker. But these things, how they fall, you know, it's it's a big chunk of metal. This is a, a pretty good size piece of metal and it's solid. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's solid, it's got a bunch of teeth marks in it. But what you can, what you may or may not be able to see from this is it's got a, a kind of a hump to it. It's got a scooped back. So when this thing is falling through the water, you cast it out and you want to, I'll cover how to fish this, I'll show you guys how to fish it. Fire it out there, leave it semi taut line, a little bit of a bow in your line and you're just gonna walk it down. Now what this thing is gonna do 
it's gonna be dancing all over the place. It's gonna be spinning, flashing, swimming side to side, and it mimics a dying bait fish. So when those little schooler bass, those white bass, whatever little fish you have, little spots in your fishery are, are eating that bait, you always have wounded or dying fish, bait fish, falling down uh, below the rest of the school, below that ball of bait. And if you guys have followed along in the past, we've talked about how some of the biggest bass, the smartest bass, the lazy bass, are down below all of that commotion. Yeah, sometimes I'll be up there feeding, sometimes you can get them up on top if they're up close to the surface, but a lot of times they're down below and they're just picking up scraps. So as this piece of metal, or shad, bait fish, whatever you wanna call it, falls down through that school, they're like, oh, easy meal, suck it up, boom, you got your DD or your PB. So a flutter spoon is a perfect bait to mimic dying bait fish. Now, couple tips. First tip, always run a stinger hook. When you buy these baits out of the package, they come typically with a split ring, a split ring, and a treble hook. Sometimes feathered, sometimes not. I go between feathered or not. Uh, it's, it's kind of preference on you. It does kind of slow down the fall of the spoon. Couple tips. Always put a swivel on the front of your spoon. When this thing is falling down there, it's twisting, it's going all over the place. You hook up a fish, or you're just casting out and you're reeling it back, this thing's gonna be spinning and it's gonna give you a ton of line twist. You guys know that line twist sucks, so definitely add a swivel to the front of your bait. The next tip, I always do this because you have a 50-50 shot when a bass hits this spoon to get the treble hook. They're either gonna eat it like this or they're gonna eat it like that. In previous videos, like this, like I said, that one a couple years ago, I talked about how to add a stinger hook to your spoon. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But if you notice some of these other spoons, some of these newer spoons on the market, now they come pre-rigged with stinger hooks. Even the big magnum spoons, you guys have never thrown a magnum spoon? It's so much fun. It's, it's a little bit of work, but it's so much fun. But even these new spoons now are coming pre-rigged with stingers. And that is exactly because of what I just mentioned, that 50-50 chance of them hitting that spoon and not getting the hook. So, little trick for you. Take your, your favorite bobber stop, put it on your line first, run it right on your main line. Then take a ST36 treble paired with a split ring and a power swivel. I will link this gear down below in the video description and run that on your main line. So what you have, you have a stinger hook on a swivel. Again, line twist and fish fighting. You don't want to mess up your line. A lot of times this time of the year, you won't catch just one fish on this spoon. Fish come up and eat that. As it's fighting, that other fish comes up to try and get it out of its mouth and that is where that stinger hook really comes into play. You can catch a lot of doubles this time of the year. And also, you're increasing your chance of getting a good hook in that fish. If it comes up and eats the head, boom, you got this stinger hook right there. It's gonna be right in the roof of the mouth. I like to put that bobber stop about an inch and a half to two inches up above that main line. That just keeps that hook in that mouth zone, if, if that's what you wanna call it. So it's not way up your line and that fish comes and hits and your stinger hook's down here and you miss it. I wanna keep that hook right in that that zone so it's always right there for those fish to get. So a couple tips for you guys to help you guys catch more fish this time of the year. Now, as far as where to fish these, I typically don't fish them that shallow. I, I said you can, five to six feet, if you've got a special dock and you got bait pinned up there, it's a cool bait to throw. Sometimes you'll catch them right on the bottom. You throw that thing out, that spoon falls, it's sitting on the bottom, it looks like a dead bait fish. You'll be surprised with what eats a chunk of metal on, on the bottom. I've caught big catfish, I've caught big bass, not even hopping the spoon, just having it there 
in that commotion in that zone. So primary where I'm fishing these, you know, right now we're out here on Lake Chickamauga, ledge fishing. You guys always hear about ledge fishing, but you reservoir fishermen, um, you know, clear like any of the, any of those bodies of water that have good populations of bait fish, when you find that bait, typically offshore is where I'm going to look. Again, in that 15 to 25 foot range, if you can find that hard structure off those long tapering points that lead into the backs of coves, that's going to be money. I'm going to fish these open water. So fired out there, a lot of times you will see the smaller fish come up, push that bait up to the surface, and you'll see them blowing up offshore. You fire that spoon out there. I'm going to show you guys how to fish it, but there's, uh, you'll be surprised with what eats that chunk of metal. So that's typically what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that offshore structure with bait around it. That is where this flutter spoon really shines. You can see, I love spoon fishing. You know, I got uh, several different types of spoons. I typically throw about four and that is it. There's a lot of different spoons on the market, uh, but I try and keep it as simple as possible. As you can see, it can get somewhat, somewhat in depth, but to keep it simple for you guys, this guy right here, again, I will link all these baits down below in the video description. This is the, it used to be the Lake Fork Flutter Spoon. Now it's called the Nichols Lake Fork Flutter Spoon. Comes in multiple sizes, four, five, six inch. That's typically my go-to. You can see right here, I already had one pulled out for you guys. It's a little four inch guy versus the five inch, six inch. That is typically my number one spoon that I start out with. If I want to throw a Magnum spoon, this is the Ben Parker spoon. The advantages to throwing a big piece of metal like this is obviously upsizing your, uh, your fish. You're targeting larger fish. I think I said this uh, uh, many years ago, but the first fish I ever caught when throwing this was a 22 pound catfish. And it just massacred this bait and uh, I thought I had uh, a new PB. But so much fun to throw. That's the Magnum spoon that I throw. Strike King makes a, uh, a pretty good spoon. It's called the Sexy Spoon. So those are the two main spoons I throw for that style. And then if I'm fishing docks or if I'm fishing a ledge on a river bin where there's lots of laydowns, but I want to get that spoon back up underneath stuff, like I said, or docks, houseboats, that sort of stuff, marinas. Um, this is the worldwide spoon. This is James Watson's spoon, and he's he's known for winning a lot of money fishing a spoon. This is the River to Spe uh, River to Sea worldwide spoon, and what makes this spoon different is it falls backwards, so you can fish it away from you and get back up underneath those uh, houseboats, floating campsites, laydowns, those types of things. So those are the four different spoons I use. The, the, the Nichols, the Lake Fork, the Strike King, it's a little bit thicker. I'll use that if I want a heavier spoon. This guy right here, if I'm fishing a round structure, I want to be underneath. And then the big Magnum spoon. So enough talking about the baits. I showed you some tips on, on how to rig them. Let's jump up. I'll uh, throw the camera up here. I'll make some casts and show you how to fish them. One thing real quick. I didn't really uh, cover it when I was sitting down, but let's talk about gear. Typically... I like throwing a longer rod uh, when fishing these spoons. I like a moderate fast action. Not as, not as flimsy as a crankbait rod, but something like that because again, a treble hook bait, you want something that's gonna load up, stay loaded as those fish come up and jump. Uh, this is actually the 904, this is the Loomis. It's a swim bait rod. It's a seven foot six and it's a moderate fast action. So I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but it loads slower, deeper into the blank, and it really keeps those fish pegged. Most of the time, 99% of the time, I'm throwing braid to leader. I will throw 30 to 65 pound braid, depending on the spoon I'm throwing, to a mono leader. The mono is very, very important because I think we've covered it, I covered it before in... Uh, 
normal vertical jigging spoon uh, videos, but uh, monofilament line is more buoyant than fluorocarbon. And when you're hopping a spoon and it's, it's hopping up and it's falling down, it's hopping up, it's falling down, the last thing you want is to get that bite when your hook is fouled. So I like that more drag in that water, that more buoyant line keeps that hook up, keeps it from down hooking on the line or hooking on the bait itself. So the mono, monofilament line for me is a must. Now you reservoir fishermen, you really clear water fishermen, you guys can get away with straight fluorocarbon. You're just gonna have uh, have a little bit of issues with sometimes that that stinger hook fouling your fluorocarbon line. Um, it's just it's, it's just part of the game. But uh, typically braid to leader. Again, I'll throw a a seven foot six to an eight foot rod if I'm really I'm fishing for big fish. If I'm fishing reservoirs, I'm fishing for offshore spotted bass, you can get away with your favorite jig rod. Something with a little slower tip would be ideal, but you guys that don't have a bunch of rods to jump uh, you know, back and forth with, if you just take your favorite jig rod, your favorite whatever your do all rod, like a four power rod, like a medium, medium heavy action rod, it'll work great. But uh, typically, a burner reel, 7.1, sometimes even faster, only because as that bait is dropping down and it stops dropping, that fish ate it on the fall. I wanna be able to reel down, catch up to them, and load that rod, so a burner reel. So now let's talk about how to cast them. I actually have this one in my hand. This is that worldwide spoon, and again, this one, this one, is made to fish around cover. So around your dock, around your marinas, around your laydowns, but to fire it out. Now typically on this, you're gonna be fairly close to the edge or the front of whatever you're fishing. So you don't have to fire this one out very far. Let's just imagine there's a marina right here and there's a dock. So what I'm gonna do Semi slack line, semi slack line. I got a little bit of a bow and that spoon is going away from me. It's going up uh, underneath that dock into that shade line where those fish are sitting to ambush. When I'm fishing around marinas or docks, well, it all depends on the depth. If I'm fishing a dock that's out over 150 feet of water, obviously I'm not gonna let this bait go to the bottom, right? But I'm gonna let it go down to 30 or 40 feet and then I'm gonna pop it up. A lot of times around the docks, you will get that bite on that initial fall. So, you reservoir guys that have marinas, houseboats, that sort of stuff, definitely check out this spoon. Again, it's a special technique spoon, but it works great around structure. So I don't wanna to spend too much time on this spoon because it is a, a specialty spoon. Let's jump back over to uh, to this guy right here and show you guys how to fish them through the bait ball and on bottom. So long cast is, is very important unless your bait ball is right here, but typically you wanna be away from it. Fire it out there. Now I call it, or I, I refer to it as walking the bait down semi-tight line i got a little bit of a bow in my line and i'm feeling that i'm feeling that spoon come and go i'm feeling that fall if my spoon disappears all of a sudden my bait goes weightless reel down and set the hook because that is a fish that ate it on the fall and you've lost your bait you need to catch up to it and set so i'm letting it go down now we're sitting we're out here actually in the channel the ledge is right over here so we're in 37 feet where I'd typically be fishing this would be right on the edge, coming down river where there's uh, current breaks and turns in the river is where I'd be fishing it. But just to show you guys how to fish these, I'm out here. And the cicada, it's, they, they get really loud. You guys were asking about what kind of sound is that in the background, those bugs, that's what they are. So I'm on bottom now. 
So typically the two different ways that I fish this, it's, either, it's gonna either be a snap snap or a long pull, pull. What I picture down there, and Matt talks about it when he's jig fishing, what I picture down there, this bait just fell. I did not get bit on the initial fall, but I might have a fish that followed it down and it's nosed up on that, on that thing right there like, what the heck is this shiny thing, right? So if I snap snap, to me, in my mind, that's mimicking a stunned bait fish that just wakes up and shoots off. And you don't give that big bass time to really uh, investigate. It's just a, it's, it's a wired into that fish. It's a predatory fish. It's wired to eat and to chase. Just like a cat. If you drag something quick by a cat, it's just going to react. So the first one is going to be the snap snap. So I'm on bottom. I take my right hand. I got that longer rod, seven and a half, eight foot rod. Snap, snap. Walk it down. I take my right hand on this longer uh, butt. It, those of you guys that have the choice, find a rod that has a longer butt section. It's easier for those pop pops throughout the day. You start fishing this all day and you're trying to do it with one hand, your elbow and your shoulder is going to be sore. So bring that right hand down, pop, pop, and then onto the reel. I slowly walk it down, bottom, pop, pop, walk it down. Now it's totally up to you to figure out how your fish want the bait. The other way, the most common way, is going to be the pull uh, technique. Now you guys saw, I just made a long cast, I just reeled that spoon all the way into the boat. You do, that time, you do that 100, 200, 300 times a day without that swivel on the front of that spoon, you're gonna have a line twist nightmare. So it's very imperative, very important that you put that swivel on the front. It doesn't really affect the, the motion or the action of the bait, but it will save you a ton of headaches. So, fire it out there. Again, walk it down. I can feel that spoon going. Give yourself some more line. Walk it down. Okay, we're on bottom. The next technique is just going to be a pull. Let it fall. It's not nearly as aggressive as the first technique. Pull. You, know, you just brought that bait up five, seven, eight feet from the bottom. Let it fall. Pull. Reel down. Each pull, you're bringing that bait closer to you. So you're going to have, uh, you're going to need to have less line out. So you're going to have to reel in a little bit. Because I'm on bottom right there. Pull. Let it fall. Follow it down. On bottom. Pull. And you can mix it up. You can, you can do the pull and then hop, hop, let it fall, do the pull. It's totally up to you, the cadence that you want to use. You will figure out what your fish want, how active they are. But as you're fishing this bait around feeding fish, around bait, fish that are actively feeding on the bait, get aggressive with it. You know, you can actually, I've caught fish I've caught fish literally throwing to the school, letting it fall through because I, again, I don't, unless they're big ones blown up, I'll, I'll start immediately. But if they're little ones blown up and I want to target those bigger ones underneath, now I'll just start reeling. Now all you have is a normal spoon that's just down there dancing. It looks like a swimming bait fish and then you can pause it and let it fall. So it looks like a swimming bait fish and then fallen. So you can get all sorts of creative with a flutter spoon. But this time of the year, when those fish are active, they're feeding up this little piece of metal right here is an awesome way to mimic dying bait fish and catch a lot of fish. Real quick, let's talk about the big magnum spoon. All the same uh, principles apply. You're just dealing with bigger gear, bigger line, typically 65 braid to, to 20 or 25 pound mono. Again, put that, that power swivel on there. And you guys have swim bait rods. You can throw your swim bait rod to fish these. 
you have a softer swim bait rod, the better. This is that uh, that uh, destroyer, it's the Mark 48. Kind of a, a soft tip on it, so it works very good for these uh, large treble hook baits, the large spoons. Same thing, I'm not gonna go too in depth with these, but on the bigger spoons, you'll have a lot wider fall. I mean, I can feel this rod just thumping, thump. As it's coming and going, leaving and coming, it's, Ooh, I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> There's something just rolled. Probably not a bass, it sounded huge, but let this get down there, pull. I don't typically do the hop hop with these big spoons. You can, but your arm is gonna yell at you the whole next of the day, because it is, it's a lot of work. But if you have the right, the proper gear, it makes it so much easier to fish. So again, pull, hand on the reel, walk it down. Pull. If you pull and you drop your rod tip and your bait doesn't go anywhere, something happened right there. Either your bait is falling a little bit funny or something ate it on the fall and came at you and that is where you want to reel down and check and set. One more cast. Walk it down. It almost feels like, uh, you know when you're a kid and you're bait fishing and you're using you know, power bait or worms or whatever, and you're watching your rod tip and it goes whoop, whoop, whoop. You're like, oh, I got a bite. That's what this feels like all the way down. These things are heavy enough too. I think this thing's like two and a half ounces or so. You can really feel when it hits bottom. Boom, reel down, pull. Pull. So there it is guys, that is Flutter Spoons. Hopefully you guys uh, learned enough in this video to have enough confidence to go out and try this on your own. You know, pond fishermen, head out to the deepest part of your pond, go out by the dam, fish this. As that, uh, as that grass dies back, you'll have a lot more access to different parts of your pond. I know typically this time of the year it's loaded with grass, but go out to that deep water and throw a flutter spoon. They make them in all sorts of colors. They make them in bluegill patterns and, and shad patterns and gold patterns. Um, those are typically the three patterns that I throw. Some kind of bait fish, a silver, a gold, and kind of a perch or a bluegill color. But uh, shore fishermen, same thing. Go out to that long tapering point, fire this thing off, you might have some uh, issues <laughs> getting hung up on bottom, but that's part of the game. Offshore fishermen, you guys know the power of a flutter spoon. And if you don't, now you do. Definitely give it a try because it is so much fun to fish. And when they, dong, it's a jig bite. When they hit that thing and you jack them, you don't know if it's a, if it's a, a one pounder or a 10 pounder. So much fun to fish. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. But that is Flutter Spoons. Got a couple tips for you on rigging. If you guys follow those tips, you guys will catch more fish. When you get those bites and you doubled up on your spoon, leave me a comment because throwing that stinger hook is, is a must. And when you catch your first double, whether it's two two pounders or two eight pounders, leave a comment because I'm excited to hear the success from you guys. If you guys, again, have any questions down below, leave them in the comment section. If you guys like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week, sometimes more, and turn on notifications. Find that little bell and click it. I don't know what's going on with YouTube right now, but a lot of you guys did not get our last video, so make sure you turn on notifications. And again, I will link that video uh, up in the top corner and down below in the video description. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.